Hello and welcome to the State of the Fleet Industry, a weekly video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine. I'm Mike Antich, editor of Automotive Fleet, and today I'd like to examine what's occurring in the fleet industry for the week of September 26, 2022. And with this week's episode, I'd like to examine the controlled allocation systems that have been implemented by most OEMs that now governs fleet vehicle ordering in the 2023 model year. In addition, I'll also examine what's currently trending in model year 2023 and make a forecast as to what might be trending in the forthcoming 2024 model year. First, let's examine the transition by most OEMs to an allocation system designed to manage the acquisitions of their products by their fleet customers. And this is significant. It's a significant development because it's a truly historic milestone that's never before happened in the history of fleet ordering. And in hindsight, as the fleet industry entered its second year of new vehicle supply constraints that was impacting all classes of vehicles, it was apparent that something needed to be done. And General Motors was in the vanguard by implementing a controlled allocation system in the 2022 model year. The purpose of the controlled allocation system was to bring order and a sense of fairness to the fleet vehicle ordering process, which had become a free for all as companies scrambled to submit orders to secure limited fleet inventory as soon as possible prior to order banks closing. Plus the allocation system also eliminated the fear that mega fleets could buy out a sizable segment of a manufacturer's inventory, especially in vehicle segments with limited model availability, such as the commercial van segment. Today, if you want to order a 2023 model, almost all OEMs require that you do so through an allocation system that is based on a variety of criteria, ranging from your past historical ordering volumes to how long you've been a customer of the OEM, along with a host of other criteria that are developed in consultation with the OEM fleet accounting manager. So one consequence to the allocation system is that many OEMs are reluctant to accept new fleet accounts because they need all of their production to meet the needs of their longtime loyal customers. And fleets who are non-customers recognize this and are inhibited from going out the bid to source vehicles from these OEMs. And here's how one fleet manager framed the current situation. Quote, with most motor companies not taking on new customers and or allocation based on loyalty and a three-year history, you can't consider going out the bid or even trying out their EVs for a pilot program, end of quote. This is today's market reality. In essence, fleet buyer demand continues to outpace fleet vehicle availability and this will most likely continue through calendar year 2023. Almost everyone in the industry agrees with this assessment, but there's a growing number of fleet managers who fear that the large number of canceled orders that are being carried over into the next model year will cause these sourcing constraints to spill over into calendar year 2024. And here's how one fleet manager describes today's market and his forecast for the next two model years. So quote, while today's sourcing situation is a bit better, even the largest buyers have allocations well below their requests. This is causing more units than ever to carry over into the next model year, which guarantees these sourcing constraints will persist for several more years before we ever catch up, end of quote. So while ordering allocation systems have brought stability to what fleets can anticipate receiving, it isn't optimal because invariably fleets will not receive all of the vehicles they need. And here's how one fleet manager explained how his fleet is being impacted by an allocation system. So quote, in the past two years, we have received 35 to 40% of the vehicles we desired. But this creates a situation where 60 to 65% of what I need to replace is not being replaced, end of quote. The issue that some fleets have with the allocation system is that it guarantees they will not get all of the vehicles they need to order. But fleet managers understand this. They're not happy about it, but they understand the need for it. But what aggravates fleet managers is even after allocated or ordered, they can be canceled by the OEM without warning. And here's how one FMC characterized 
the situation looking at its client ordering activity across the company's entire vehicle portfolio. Quote, even large fleets who have been ordering from the same OEM for many years are barely getting any allocation. But the real issue is that once orders are placed after receiving allocation, vehicles are canceled without warning, end of quote. This is occurring more often than many of us think. So even if a fleet has been assured in allocation, there is still a possibility that some of these orders can be canceled. This is what is frustrating to fleet managers. Not only is the frustration that orders can be canceled, but that they can be canceled without any warning. These sourcing constraints are primarily driven by the semiconductor shortage, along with a variety of other supply shortages, which together have slowed new vehicle production or created production shortfalls. The question is, how much longer will this continue? Most of the industry agrees that these constraints will continue through calendar year 2023. The question is whether these constraints will continue into the 2024 calendar year. So when trying to answer this question, it's helpful to analyze it in a historical context because the industry's track record in forecasting the ultimate resolution of these sourcing constraints has not been good. So for instance, the shortage of semiconductors first started to become evident to the fleet end users in the fourth quarter of 2020. And at that time, the conventional wisdom within the industry was that the shortage would dissipate by the beginning of the second quarter of 2021. And when this didn't happen, the goalpost was moved to the end of the summer of 2021, and then to the end of calendar year 2021, and then the second quarter of 2022. So here we are entering the fourth quarter of 2022, and the shortage is still with us. The bottom line is that the automotive industry has consistently underestimated the length of time these sourcing constraints will last. And when I talk to fleet managers, they say that their OEM reps are telling them that the 2023 calendar year will look better than 2022. But better is a relative term. Fleet managers say they're being told that they should anticipate getting 50% of the vehicles ordered. But that means that 50% of the vehicles they need to be replaced will not be replaced. And the 50% they are actually receiving will be based on what is available from the OEM and not what the fleet needs the most. So here's what another fleet manager said, quote, we no longer get what we actually need, we get what the OEM is telling us they can give us, end of quote. So all of this gets back to the question as to how much longer will these sourcing constraints continue? So, so far we've heard estimates from fleet managers, estimates from FMCs, here's an estimate from one major OEM. Quote, we anticipate that it will be at least two more years that there will be an inability to fully secure all vehicle replacements, end of quote. And if this is correct, this means that sourcing constraints could theoretically continue into the 2025 model year. And even if all of the sourcing constraints are eliminated, we still have the issue of pent-up demand for vehicles whose orders have been canceled and simply moved to the next model year. This is the proverbial elephant in the room. The unanswered question is, what impact will this large volume of pent-up demand have on future vehicle availability? And here's what one fleet manager said, quote, at this time, we are in such a deficit with replacement vehicles that it would be impossible to replace that many vehicles in a single year, end of quote. And I tend to agree with this fleet manager. The whittling down of the accumulated industry-wide pent-up demand on top of the industry's normal replacement volume will be a multi-year process. So even if the supply chain shortages are smoothed out sometime in calendar year 2023, we will still be looking at another year or two to fulfill the pent-up demand that currently exists in the industry. But the reality is that we work in a dynamic economy and these forecasts could easily change. So for instance, what would be the impact if there was a recession in the next several years? And this is being forecast by a growing number of economists. One consequence is that the recession could exert downward pressure on retail demand that potentially could free up additional vehicle allocation to fleets. Or another possible scenario is that future fleet allocation could increase if higher interest rates on auto loans 
cause more retail buyers to postpone new vehicle purchases or cause them to shift their purchase instead to the used vehicle market. Again, freeing up potential additional vehicle allocation for fleet customers. Let's hope that product availability constraints are resolved in 2023, but most of fleet managers that I talk with are bracing themselves for an ongoing multi-year struggle to get the allocation they need to keep their businesses running. And this is especially strong among truck fleets where the vehicles are essentially their business. For these companies, if they do not have trucks or vans they need, their businesses will be impaired. So with this as my final observation, I'd like to conclude my State of the Fleet Industry presentation for the week of September 26, 2022. And I'd like to thank you for watching.